So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how I started this YouTube channel. How I transformed myself from the awkward duck I used to be to the smooth talker I am today. And more importantly, how I faced my South Indian family with the news that I would become an influencer. Okay, to be fair, not much has really changed since I started this channel a little less than two years ago. I am still an introvert, in fact, all this time on my own has probably made me even more awkward than before. But we've come a long way. And for those of you who are thinking of starting your own channel, hopefully this will be that little push of motivation to help you get started. Specifically, I'll chat more about why I started this channel in the first place. And then we'll talk about how I first got myself to upload that first video, how I got over that fear of being judged online, and how over months I slowly developed my own style that allows me to maximize the parts of this process that I enjoy the most. And shout out to today's sponsor, Storyblocks. We'll get back to them in a little bit, but first let's get into the video. So I think there was something circulating on Twitter recently saying that nowadays, kids wanna be YouTubers when they grow up. But back in my day, in the age of Charlie Bit My Finger and this music video, I never seriously considered YouTube to be a viable career. But little did I know that by 2019, I'd be walking down the streets of SF with my bags packed, having just quit my tech job to become an entrepreneur. And I just wanted to go into this knowing that I was doing absolutely everything I could to make things work, even if that meant embarrassing myself on the internet for thousands to see. But yeah, basically I quit my job to start my consulting company, Haiku, and then this channel grew out of a need to promote that business and also to more broadly just build my personal brand. And with all this free time sitting at home, unemployed, I just needed something to do. Now, despite my ambitious dreams of entrepreneurship, it still took me several weeks to muster up the courage and upload that first video. Because every time I had a video idea, I'd ask myself, is this good enough? What if I embarrass myself? What if I say something wrong? But at this point, I was already set on making my channel, so it was really just a matter of starting. So one night, I just told myself, I have to upload a video tonight. No ifs, ands, or buts. So I screen recorded myself coding as far away from my roommates as possible and stayed up till 4 a.m. editing. And I probably rewarded myself the next day with some boba for my unrivaled bravery. <laughs> And I didn't really have much to lose by uploading that first video. I only had four subscribers, all of which were me. No one else knew about my channel. And those who did watch my video, who had to bear through six minutes of this, had no idea who I was anyways. So yeah, my biggest piece of advice is just to start. It doesn't matter how high quality or how crappy that first video is. Things will just start getting a lot easier once you start uploading. And even after clicking upload, I was so nervous that people would discover my channel. My parents, my friends, my high school classmates. What would they think? What if they judge me? And that was a completely normal fear. We live our lives thinking that we have the spotlight on us, that everyone is staring at us, judging us for every flaw and mistake that we make. And as an introvert, someone who already felt uncomfortable with any kind of attention, the idea of putting myself out there for everyone to see was quite terrifying. But one thing that actually helped me a lot with this was writing on Quora, which I started back in 2018. And just like with YouTube, it took me nearly a year to write my first answer. I was so scared that people would think that my ideas were dumb, or that I was a horrible writer, or that my advice wasn't helpful. But over that year, I ended up writing dozens of answers and started to love every part of the process. With the little nudges of validation from comments and upvotes, I slowly built up my confidence. I realized that my ideas might not be so dumb after all. And it was so surprising to see that so many people resonated with my experiences. And because of that, I started opening up. I became more and more comfortable sharing snippets of my life online. So yeah, if uploading videos on YouTube is scary, I'd highly recommend starting off with writing online. 
whether it's anonymously on Reddit or on Quora or a blog. It'll make the idea of sharing your ideas publicly a lot less scary. But if you look at some of my older videos, I was really awkward and stiff on camera. Even if I was getting more comfortable sharing my ideas online, speaking on such a public forum was another story. And even now, I'm not 100% comfortable in front of the camera, and I never film in front of family or my roommates. In fact, I always felt so silly at home setting up this entire camera rig just to film myself pouring a cup of coffee. And so I overcompensated by doing things like this. But ultimately, I just kind of stopped caring about what the people around me or what strangers on the internet thought. There's this quote from one of the only books I read recently that I'll be censoring that says, you and everyone you know are gonna be dead soon. And in the short amount of time between here and there, you'll have a limited amount of fries to give. Very few, in fact. And if you go around giving a fry about everything and everyone without conscious thought or choice, well, then you're gonna get fried. While I don't love being in front of the camera, I didn't want to regret not starting this channel or giving up because I was scared of what people think. And in pretty much every one of my videos, you'll probably notice that I use a lot of stock footage, partially to spend less time in front of the camera and mostly to help me tell my stories more effectively. And regardless of what style of content you're making, whether it's a documentary on the Telugu film industry or a lecture on reversing a linked list, you probably should be using Storyblocks, which is the lovely sponsor of today's video. Storyblocks helps bring your stories to life with stock video, music, sound effects, even an easy to use online video editor. And as a small creator, I'm limited on time and money. And when it's 2 a.m. and I just need to finish that one edit, Storyblocks makes it so much easier to tell my story without having to scour the internet for hours for that perfect clip. So pick a subscription that works for you and you can get access to unlimited royalty-free audio and video content to spice up your YouTube videos. So use my link in the description and check out Storyblocks if you haven't already. And thank you again Storyblocks for supporting my channel. Now back to the video. Now YouTube is such an interesting space because there are so many ways you can showcase your strengths. If you love writing, you can make video essays. If you love filmmaking, you can make aesthetic vlogs. If you love teaching, you can make coding tutorials. That being said, it took me months to figure out what kind of creator I wanted to be and what aspects of this process I love the most. But the beauty of YouTube is that you can create your own style. And I don't need to be as extrovert as Casey Neistat. And I don't need to be a Cambridge grad to talk about productivity. For me, I don't love talking straight to the camera, but I love the creative aspect of making videos, of shooting aesthetic b-roll and finding the right music and experimenting with new types of edits. And now I've found ways to balance scripting and recording and going all out with editing. I've created my own style that's simple and moderately aesthetic that optimizes for what I love about this process. Now it's easy for me to sit here all these months later and say that YouTube has changed my life. But it hasn't been easy, especially those first few months when I would put hours and hours into a video, but the numbers on my YouTube analytics wouldn't reflect that hard work. But YouTube has given me so much confidence. It's allowed me to be comfortable being a goofball and sharing what I love on the internet. It's allowed me to break out of my shell, to stop caring about what other people think. While I'll still be that quiet girl standing in the corner of the room at a party, I now have the space where I can be free to be myself. And even though this video is about YouTube, a lot of the things I talked about can be applied to pretty much anything in life that you've been meaning to try for a while. Maybe it's your own blog or a coding project or even a business. There are always going to be aspects of the process that are scary that we won't be perfect at right away. But I assure you that once you get started, the benefits will far outweigh any of those initial fears. And yeah, that's it for today's video. 
Now, I wanna know, for those of you who are thinking of starting your own YouTube channel, what is that one thing that's been holding you back? Or if you started your own channel, how did you overcome those fears? Let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you want to. Thank you again, Storyblox, for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next one. I started this YouTube channel.